Good morning and welcome to STEM Pro Live. My name is Marlis with the Maricopa County Education Service Agency and I am here with Jake Bodell, an architect at Orcutt Winslow, an architecture and design firm right here in downtown Phoenix. But not only is Jake an architect, but he specifically works on projects related to school systems. So whether that's an elementary, middle, or high school building that needs classrooms for all you students to sit in and a cafeteria and maybe a gymnasium, or an administration building where some of your school leaders work, uh, those are the projects that go to Jake. So I'm gonna turn it over to him and let him talk a little bit about what all he does in his job here and also how he first got interested in architecture. Um, and remember students that throughout the broadcast, uh, when Jake's speaking, feel free to send in the questions you have for him and I'll ask him those and have him answer those near to the end of the broadcast. So Jake, so thanks so much for being here and I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, I'm really excited to talk to you guys. I love being an architect. Right now we are on the 16th floor of a high rise in downtown Phoenix. That's where I get to work every day. I can look out at all the buildings, which I love to see. Um, Orcutt Winslow is an architecture firm, like she said. Uh, architects are the leaders that design buildings. I say leaders because there's a lot of help and a lot of experts that, that work on a, on a project like this. Um, architects is one of the, uh, being an architect is one of the oldest jobs. Um, that there was an architect that designed the pyramids and that designed castles, but uh, it's changed a lot because we use technology now. Um, to do our designs. So it, in doing schools, I have a lot of help. Um, there are civil engineers and structural engineers and experts in plumbing and air conditioning and electrical, and an architect is the leader of that whole team. So they need to be good at talking to people and working together in groups and teams. And um, we also get to be in charge of the design. We wanna make buildings look beautiful and special and uh, in, in schools especially don't you guys want to be able to come to your classrooms and, and be proud of the school that you're in and have a, a classroom that has nice light and, and sound properties and um, making a good space is something that I've always been interested in uh, when I was a, a kid in school I always remembered whenever I learned anything I learned what, what seat in the classroom I was sitting in or what room in the whole school. I always thought about spaces and, and, and shapes a lot. And, um, my dad, who was a, a builder, he's the one that would actually you know, build buildings, he'd take me out to different uh, projects as they were getting built. I just thought that was so cool to see somebody's idea coming up from the ground and, and becoming real. So um, th that and I I was always, um, I was not very sharp at math in elementary school. I was remembered when we did our multiplication tables, I was the last one to finish a lot of those, but something just clicked in sixth grade and it all started making a little bit more sense. I think about the time we started learning about geometry and shapes, and um, I still use it, a lot of that today to figure out the, the sizes of buildings and the heights and uh, to talk to my engineers about how to make things safe and strong in our buildings. So I, I wanted to walk you through an actual project that, that I did with um, the other architects here at Orcutt Winslow and, and with all my partners, all those engineers. And that's a school that we recently did in Queen Creek. Usually a, a big school like this, about 100,000 square feet, probably a lot like some of the schools you're in, um, takes maybe two years for the architects and the owners to get together and, and design this building and then another, um, it, that's usually about six to eight months, and then it usually takes a year and a half or so to build. This one we had to do so fast because out, out where the school is built, the population was growing and they needed a school really bad. So we did this whole project, designing it on the computer and actually building it in seven months. We had some really good help from different people. Just kind of walk around and show you this computer program that we use is almost like a video game where we build the, the buildings ahead of time and then we can figure out how they need to come together to, to be build, built. Um, all that computer information comes into a set of drawings like this. This one's about 120 pages, different sheets with drawings of, of how the builder's actually gonna build the thing. But in order to keep it all straight, we rely on this computer model. 
just fly around a little bit here. The school is one big building. Um, you see that more and more these days to do one building for a school, maybe two stories, because you'll save energy if, if all the classrooms open to an, an inside hallway that's air conditioned. It's also safer because you don't have um, people wandering in off the street into your school. There's a nice front entry. And this school, running right down the middle, has a big two-story hallway, nice and tall. So when the students come in in the morning, they get to see this big space. And sometimes they have PE in here. Sometimes they have big project displays or events, like the school carnival. And so we try and make this a really large, inviting space. And the classrooms, if you go down one of these corridors, go through one of these doors. We like classrooms with lots of windows to let in natural light. And you've got technology in these classrooms, like a, a smart board. And these students have tablets that they can uh, do class assignments on. You notice there's lights in the ceiling and, and air conditioning vents. You've got sink and storage cabinets. So you can start to see that a lot of things go into any building like this. And uh, it's really fun for me to keep track of all that and work with different people to make it come together. Like I said, we did this building really fast. And one of my favorite parts about being an architect is that you get to see it get built. So a couple of times a week, I leave my desk and my computer here and, and take a tablet with the, with the plans on them. And I get to walk around the, the job site as things are getting built. This is a picture of the elevator shaft where they had to dig down and, and build up concrete in order to put an elevator in the, in the future. So this was about six months ago. This was about two months ago. You see they built up all the walls. They started putting the windows in, but it's still pretty blank and white. This is what it looked like on the inside before the roof went on. You can see the, the masonry walls and the, and the steel going across for the roof before it gets put on. This is a, what it's like before they pour a slab that you, you all walk on in, in the classrooms. And this is the library when it was finished. It has big glass doors that open out into that two-story atrium space so that big events with lots of people can, can happen in there. And this is what it looked like at the end. when Everything was painted and finished and metal panels. This was just a few weeks ago before students showed up for school. So we got it ready in time, and that's why I like my job. I get to see these ideas that I had in the computer actually get built in the real world. Awesome. Well, thanks so much, Jake, for talking to us about um, everything that you do. We've got several questions coming in already, um, and I think we'll start off with, uh, what do you, how do you start a project? What do you do first when you find out that there's a school system or some other company that wants to build something how do you get started? Sure. Uh, something I like about architecture is it's a mix between art and engineering or science. And so we always we, we want to make something that looks nice. So we might sketch a lot. We might build models in the computer or, or out of uh, paper and cardboard uh, to try and make something look nice. But at the same time, we need to know what the project actually needs to be. How many students are you going to have in this space? Uh, what? what uh, what kind of school is it? How do they teach? And so you, you kind of gather all that information and you, you just kind of start with early plans that maybe um, it's just a lot of colored squares on a, on a page at one time, but then you, you build it up into an actual school in, that, in those models that we saw. Very cool. And along with that, how much do you work with teachers, principals, maybe even students within the school to, to make it something that really works for them? Sure. We like to ask lots of questions. That, that, process at the very beginning is called programming. We'll, we'll make big lists and maybe we talk to the science teacher about what the science teacher needs. Um, we'll talk to the principal about what they'd like to see for safety and security and, and meeting rooms and 
Um, but we, we definitely love to get out and meet with teachers. My mom's a teacher, and so uh, that's something that we hope our buildings make it even better for kids to go to school, for students to, to attend class, and for the, the teachers to teach in. Awesome. Something we always keep in mind. Very cool. And how long did it take you to become an architect? That's a good question. It, it took a while. Um, <laughs> so after I finished high school, uh, I wasn't sure if I wanted to be an architect or something else. And w when I went to classes at, at Arizona State University, uh, the architect classes were just so fun because we were working on models and projects and real things. I could stay up all night working on these projects. My other classes, I didn't do quite as well. Sometimes I'd fall asleep because I'd been up so late. I just knew, oh, this architecture stuff is fun. But it took me four years to get an undergraduate degree, and a lot of architects um, have master's degrees. So that's another two years. So after six years of school, I then took seven tests, and I had to work for a couple of years, and then I could call myself an architect. You get a little stamp that you can uh, put right on the drawings that says, Jake Bodell, architect. Awesome. And uh, how long does it take from the initial finding out you've, you're working with a partner mm -hmm. to design a building to the finished product? What does that timeline look like? Uh, depends on how big and how complex the building is. But uh, on this one, we had to go so fast that we kind of gave them a, a set of plans to start building from in just two and a half months from the time we started, which is pretty fast when you think about all that has to go into those 120 pages. Thanks. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's eight months. Awesome, and how many architects does it take to design a building, which I'm sure kind of depends on the project as well. Sure, I, I think on this project we had four or five people that maybe they don't work on it every single day, all, all day long, but they come in and help out. That's something else I love is that it's different every day. Maybe I'll help somebody with this little project or um, do my own thing. Maybe I'm out in the field. Field. Maybe I'm meeting with teachers. Well, very different every day. And uh, yeah, sometimes a team of two, sometimes a team of four or five. Depends on how big it is. Awesome. And when you're building the models that you talked about, do you use foam mock-ups or do you use 3D printed models to show uh, your clients or do, maybe both? Well, sometimes we do. Um, a lot of the models are just on the computer like you saw. We love making those kind of those models, and we've been doing more and more of that. But um, if you really want to show a teacher their classroom, you can't really get inside those little models. So we like to do it all on the computer, and they can walk right through it, just like on a video game. Awesome. And you mentioned um, several of the, it was when you took geometry that you first started to get interested in the work mm -hmm. you now do. How well do you use science and math in, um, in what you do? Sure. I, I wish it was more. It's not a, a whole lot, but uh, things like um, use addition and multiplication all day long. Don't use much algebra. Um, we, we use a lot of science in, in thinking about designing buildings. Um, so we want to make sure that they use as little energy as possible. So there's a lot of science that goes into lighting and energy and uh, plumbing. But a lot of those things I have engineers that help me with. So I don't use a, a whole lot of math day to day, but it was a really good foundation for for figuring things out. One thing I use all the time is area. You know, length times width equals your size. In architecture, we use square footage. That's how we figure out how big to make different spaces. I know that a, a good classroom size is 900 square feet. A gymnasium might be 9,000. That helps us make sure that our buildings are actually the right size. Awesome. And then did you have to take some art classes along with the math and science courses? Uh, yeah, we did. I mean, that's something that all architects usually love is, is art. Uh, there's some drawing. Uh, even though a lot of that's on the computer, it's, it's still fun for us to kind of have an artist's eye and appreciate different things about different buildings. Um, you know, all, all the buildings in a city, when you look around, the big ones were designed by architects. And so you're always looking for ideas, and I think there's some art to that. Awesome. And we've got a few different classrooms uh, that are curious about the uh, software that you showed us. Mm -hmm. And are you able to explain kind of generally how, how you use that or how that works? <laughs> sure. The first drawing software that, that was around maybe 30 years ago was all just drawing lines. And then you print those out on paper. This software, you actually will model a wall. Um, and that wall knows how thick it is and what materials are in it and how tall it needs to be. So you really put a lot of information in there. And then your model's really smart. I could tell a contractor that you've got you know, 
this many cubic yards of concrete in your whole building. We've got it figured out because we've all modeled it in there. Um, th this one that we use is called ARCHICAD. It's a great tool. But one thing that I really love to play around with, and in school and even still, to come up with quick, fast designs is SketchUp. That's a fun thing that you know, any middle schooler could, could learn and, and have a lot of fun making shapes and buildings and furniture, cars, whatever you're, you could imagine. Awesome. Uh, and we've got a great question that just came in. How does the architect, or you, work with builders? What's that relationship like? That's a good question. So both of us will work for the owner. In the case of a school, it's maybe a school district. And so we're working with them, with the owner, to figure out what they want. And that's when we come up and put all their ideas and our ideas on paper. And then we give that to the contractor. And he's trying to build it. And even during construction, there's going to be a lot of questions, a lot of things that weren't quite figured out. Um, I always like to think about when, when you make a car, one of these big car companies, they do it 100,000 times. So they've really got it perfected. This building that we make is one of a kind. And so it's the first time you're doing some of these things together. So there's a lot of working together. They're going to ask us questions in, in the field. And we'll, we'll respond by either sending drawings or giving instructions. Uh, but there's a lot of working together. I like working with, with contractors. Awesome. Oh, that's a good question, too. What's the difference between, is the contractor the builder, or what, what, what is that? Person? Sure. A, a contractor basically means builder. Okay. Uh, sometimes there's different ways that that, uh, sometimes the contractor, day one, has to set, set a price and build the whole thing for that and make it work. Sometimes there's other relationships where you'd, you'd have a, a construction manager, but contractor basically means builder. Got it. Fantastic. Uh, and how many school buildings have you built? Do you know off the top of your oh, head? Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> You lose a little bit of track. Sometimes you'll do a campus that has five buildings or ten, but I bet it's about 50 so far wow. in the six years I've been doing this. Wow, six years you said, mm -hmm. 50 buildings. Wow, very cool. Uh, and one classroom wanted to know, what's the biggest building you've ever worked on? Hmm. You happen to know that one off the top of your head? <laughs> um, yeah, it's probably uh, Thunderbird High School. We did four or five buildings there, and that was about 220,000 square feet, which is pretty big. Great. Uh, and now we've got a couple questions that have come in about the um, relationship between the contractor and the architect that you okay. were talking about. Um, so one asked, have you ever designed a building that the contractor built wrong or maybe didn't turn out like it was quite supposed to? And I don't know how much detail you're able to go into, sure. but what That's do you do great in that question. situation? Um, you know, most of the contractors I work with, fortunately, are, are really good. And, and they want to make something look really nice because their name's on that as well. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you see things a little bit differently, and it may not have worked out just the way you wanted. Um, sometimes we can fix it, but sometimes you just have to let it go and realize, next time I'll do that a little bit better. I'll give them a little bit more drawings or more information to do it just the way I want it. So awesome. it's a learning process. Awesome. And uh, related to that, how important are relationships and communication skills in what you do? Oh, they're very important. Mm -hmm. uh, like I said, if, if, if I was the kind of person that just liked to work on my computer and I didn't like to talk to people or, or be around people or work together, uh, this probably wouldn't be the right job. I, I love working with people and um, calling my experts on the phone or meeting together to come up with a solution. Every day is a different problem, and, and solving that is something that I really love. And it, usually don't do that alone. You always bounce ideas off other people and gather their experiences because it's always going to be a better project if you, if you get that help from other people. Awesome, awesome. And is there one particular building or project that you worked on that you really enjoyed more than any other, kind of your favorite project to work on? Um, there, there have been a lot of favorites. A really cool building that I'm proud of, and I'll send, we'll put a picture online so you can see this, is the Hope Community Center. And that building, before you walk in, we had the idea of we want people to really know they're coming in someplace special. And we put a huge wall above the door that tilts down on you like this. And instead of just having paint, it was covered in mirrors. And so you, you can see yourself walking in. And uh, it's just really interesting to sit there and watch people come and go. And that reflection of kind of changing your orientation when you walk in is, is something that people enjoy, and it's, it's a cool front to a building. So I'm, I'm proud of that. Very cool. That sounds really, yeah, extra awesome to walk through. 
And we've got one school, I assume uh, Desert Mirage Elementary School, is curious if you know, did you happen to design their building? Well, we did, their oh, gymnasium. So Orcutt Winslow has done jobs for Pendergast School District for a long time, and Desert Mirage is one of them. And uh, we, I, I did work on the gymnasium that you just got about two years ago. Awesome, that's a The other really buildings cool are a lot older than that, but. Awesome. And then someone else wanted to hear, uh, do architects only design buildings or do you design things other than buildings? Like you would mentioned cars, do architects design cars or are those a different kind of engineer? That's a great question. Those are um, a lot of products that you see like phones or, uh, or computers are designed by industrial designer. That means a product designer basically. Um, and cars are a special branch of that called automotive design. Um, and they'll have lots of engineers work in that too, but the actual look and feel of, of what a car is would be a, an automotive designer. Mm -hmm. um, architects usually just really focus on buildings, but uh, there's some overlap. Sometimes we get into the landscape, the, you know, the, the trees and, and landscape and, and things around a building. Uh, that's a landscape architect, but there's some crossover. We work together with them, right? Um, and sometimes we like picking really cool furniture that, that uh, a furniture designer put in. So th there's a lot of overlap. Graphic design, they do things like signs or websites. So we'll, we'll work with them a lot to, to do that, but architects awesome. are usually buildings. Okay, and so you, you solely work on the buildings. You don't do any of the interior design yourself? or Well, or interior or? design is kind of part of the building. So we have people here that are specially interior designers and they know all about all the products that would go on the floor or the ceiling or the furniture and they're great experts at that but we kind of cross over you know the idea of, of, of a space when you design that it's both architecture and interior design and so we really kind of do both at the same time and, and work together as a team. Awesome and did you have any kind of internship or program where you kind of got to follow along some people or did you where you dropped into the job and, and I did. Part, learned there. Part of my school uh, was, uh, you know, in the summer between school years at, at college was, um, got assigned to work with an architect. And I worked with a great architect named Terry Sewell. And he mostly did houses and churches and small buildings. And it was just me and him and he taught me a lot of things. And so that was a great start. Very cool. That was an internship. Awesome. And where all do you build your buildings? Are you just here within the Phoenix area, across the state, or across that's, the world? That's a great question. It's, it's where we can get projects. So we're known by a lot of the, the schools here in the state to be a really great architecture firm. We're the largest local firm in the state that is only here. This is our only office, but sometimes we'll go project. I just finished a school in Texas. That was pretty wow. unique. Um, and we've had other projects elsewhere, too. Very cool. And what differences are there uh, between building and designing a building here in Arizona as opposed mm -hmm. to, you know, maybe in the Midwest or out east? Or does, does location make a difference? It does because oh. um, your, your building is kind of an enclosure that protects you from the outside. You can't go to school in Alaska if it's minus 10 degrees outside and you don't have a really good wall and a really good furnace system that's keeping that heat in. Here, it's mostly about cooling, especially in the summers. We need to have a lot of air conditioning, and uh, it determines what kind of glass we might have in your windows or how, what your wall is built out of. So we definitely take into consideration that thing. Also, snow. If a, you know, three months of snow were to fall here, fall here in Phoenix, a lot of roofs would collapse because that's so heavy on them. That's something we don't usually have to deal with too bad, awesome. like they would elsewhere. <laughs> Great. And someone asked, do architects like you design parking garages as well? Is yep. That, yeah. uh, they, they can. I don't do a lot of that. It's probably a specialty, somebody that knows just right how to fit all the cars in just right, how to make the ramps work. But we've got an engineer upstairs that does a lot of parking garages. Very cool. And our time is starting to wind down, mm -hmm. so if you have any other questions, get those in quickly. Um, here's a great one to... Uh, start to bring things to a close, and that is on a scale of one to 10, how much do you enjoy your job? Oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes there's challenges, so maybe I should say a nine, but I can't imagine doing anything else. I don't think it would be, anything else would be as fun, so maybe I gotta say a 10. Fantastic, very cool. And how do you, uh, when you finished a project, how do you judge that it's been successful? How do you know that? What a that great question to yeah. close with. I love to, usually when a big public building like a school is, is finished, they have a dedication. And so a lot of the, the 
people come, in this case, you know, students and parents and teachers. And so it's really fun to see them enjoy the building and, and talk about it. And, um, you know, if, if there's some spaces that I came up with, some ideas that were, you know, right for me and they work, then that's something I'm really proud of. It's really awesome. fun to see. All right, and we'll just finish with one last question, sure. which is for the students listening today mm -hmm. that say, oh, I really enjoy um, the idea of designing something. I really enjoy combining art and communication skills with some science and math. Mm -hmm. what, what advice would you have for them to, to do next or how to maybe get where you are? You know, make your own projects. Have your own ideas. Um, you know, I, I think the point that I really knew that I wanted to do this was when it was not just homework anymore, but it was really fun to, to work on these projects at home on my own time. And so, you know, try downloading SketchUp and modeling things on the computer. Um, try drawing. Try doing your own little project at your house. Come up with new ideas, and I, I think you'll find out if you really like it or not. Very cool. And that's Google SketchUp? Is the name of that? Uh, it was bought out by Trimble, but you oh, just look whoops. up SketchUp on, <laughs> online and you'll find it. You should be able to find it. Awesome. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being with us today, Jake. My pleasure. Thank you, students and teachers, so much for joining us. And please be on the lookout in your inboxes. You should be getting a survey from us very soon about STEM Pro Live and if we're uh, doing things you enjoy and that are useful in your classrooms or if there are ways we can improve. We really want to know what we can do even better because we want to do this for you guys. Um, and also, if there were a few questions that came in at the end that we didn't have time for, I'll try to talk with Jake and see if we can get you those answers as soon as we can. So thanks so much again, um, and have a great rest of your school day.